We begin a new series for this month called Who Is This Man? Uh, we'll look at the book of Hebrews um, and we will attempt to understand who this man is that is Jesus um, and what makes him unique and special um, for us as Christians. And so to begin, as, as we read uh, the first chapter of Hebrews, that, that will be our focus uh, scripture uh, throughout this month um, in understanding about Jesus, um, we cannot escape the fact that Jesus is, his, his, is history's most important figure. Jesus is the dividing line for history. Now, for most of you, you, you grew up and uh, history is divided into two parts, B.C. and A.D., before Christ and Anno Domini, the year of our Lord. Well, um, within the last couple decades, um, academics and, and, and others have tried to uh, change that to make it not so focused uh, on Christianity. And so uh, the, they use uh, the abbreviations BCE and CE. Well, here's the thing. The same dividing line for BCE and CE, uh, before the common era and the common era, is the same dividing line as B.C. and A.D. So, okay, we took Jesus' name uh, out of it, but Jesus' coming is still the dividing line. Um, so Jesus influences history. Jesus influences every, nearly every aspect of human life, art, literature, human rights, Law, government, medicine, performing arts, etc., etc. Jesus is a defining part for all of human life, including our history. And so, because Jesus is history's most important figure, everybody has different ideas of who Jesus is. Some say, well, you know, he, he's a good teacher of morals. You know, a lot of his morality is, is worth following. Uh, you know, particularly about uh, taking care of, of, of the poor, the widows, the orphans, um, and, and having justice. You know, some say, well, you know, he's a, he's a very good preacher. Uh, he's a, an object of, of devotion for some. Uh, he's a friend of, of sinners. He's uh, a leader of a new uh, sect uh, of Judaism that takes off. Um, you know, you can look at, uh, at the pictures uh, for this uh, series um, that, that, uh, posted on, on, uh, uh, Facebook and, and the top row shows, uh, what I think a lot of us are familiar with the, uh, Western European Jesus and the bottom row shows, um, maybe ones that we're not as familiar with, uh, Jesus as a Chinese man, which is geared for Chinese believers. Um, uh, a version of uh, a Renaissance painting um, that was uh, incorrectly restored. Uh, this, this painting uh, known as uh, Ecce Homo, Behold the Man uh, in Latin, uh, and how it was uh, incorrectly restored by someone who didn't know what they were doing. Uh, a picture of what Jesus might have looked like as a first century Mediterranean Jew that would be you know, more historically accurate. Or a black Jesus because uh, it, it's speaking about uh, Jesus for the the black community and even uh, satirized versions of Jesus from secular society. So there's all these pictures literally of, of Jesus uh, you know because he's important in history uh, in, in art and literature and all that. But for those of us who call ourselves Christian, Jesus, the most important role that he uh, has is Savior. He is the Savior and Admittedly, this is the hardest of these roles. Uh, savior is a hero. Um, the Savior is expected to be a superhero. Now, we all like heroes. Even, even uh, it, it doesn't matter whether we're, we're man or, or, or woman. Uh, we, we all like heroes. You know? uh, that's not to say everybody reads uh, you know, the Batman and, and X-Men and, and all those comic books. But we all... Um, have this idea of having heroes, and we like our we like heroes. We clearly we do as uh, uh, all the 
superhero movies seem to just make all kinds of money when they're released um, and, and have such fandoms, um, which is nothing new, um, even from uh, uh, early uh, ancient uh, history, we see uh, the hero uh, narrative. And so for, for the Greeks and Romans uh, in particular, they, they have their heroes um, and, and other uh, societies, uh, uh, the, the uh, Babylonians, the Egyptians, uh, and, and, and all this, all of mythology has their heroes. And what's unique about most of these mythologies, uh, and for many of us who are familiar with Greek and Roman uh, mythologies, all these heroes are very human. They're very flawed. Um, and, you know, so the question would be, well, if they're heroes, they, they should be better, right? Well, we like our heroes to be like us because it's inspiring that maybe we could be a hero someday. Um, because the heroes are just like us. They're flawed. They they struggle with the relationships. They struggle with all the other parts of, of, of humankind. And so uh, we see even, maybe not our superheroes or mythology heroes, we see what we call as uh, heroes today. We we have political heroes, and well, they're flawed in some way. And, and for sports fans, well, our players and coaches, they, they have their flaws, right? You know, that they, 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 they couldn't win enough games or they couldn't win against that uh, team that much. Even celebrities who sometimes are regarded as heroes, uh, and that's another story, they're flawed as well, right? You know, they 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 say things or they uh, support uh, opinions that we don't like. Uh, we we really like what they do uh, as far as the roles that they play in in movies and television. But we're like, gosh, I wish they wouldn't say these things. And so our heroes are flawed, except for Jesus. Uh, Jesus is different in this aspect. Jesus is a savior and hero differently than everybody else. Um, maybe that's why Jesus tells um, believers in John's gospel. He says, um, one that we're familiar with, John 14, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. Now, we hear that and we go, well, yeah, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And some people read that and they go, well, why would Jesus say that? You know, because that that's just not very inclusive. That 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 would seem to say that other religions don't have truth. Well, you know, other religions they they have their approach. And even we as Christians, we we all would have to agree that the one thing that is probably true or part of every religion that we can't quite disagree with. Um is that religion is trying to save us from something bad. Now, here's the difference. Every other religious system in the world says, you can do certain things to save you. If you do this this many times, if you uh, take this action, if you uh, uh, try to do these things, if you follow this moral system, you will be saved from the bad things. Now, here's the thing. Uh, some of the things that they teach believers to do are in conflict with what other religions say. Well, if you don't give in to this, well, that kind of goes against this idea. Um, they all can't agree. There's at least something that, that they're all going to disagree with each other about. You can't believe in all of them without negating all of them. If you believe in everything, you really don't believe in anything. Uh, it'd be like trying to look at a map and say, well, you know, any road will lead me to wherever I want to go. It doesn't work that way. Um, to kind of borrow from... Uh, the more down home saying, you can't get there from here. You know, if somebody asks you, well, how do you get from uh, Corden to uh, somewhere? Uh, you know, and, and a lot of us will say, well, you can't get there from there, from here. 
uh, it would be like saying, well, you know, you take this road and it gets there. No, there is no direct road from Gordon to uh, there. There are other roads to other places that will get you there, but you have to go through those. It's not an A to B uh, from point A to point B road. It's point A to point E to point D to point C, and then point C goes to point B. So yeah, you did end up at point B, but you had to go a bunch of different, uh, had to take a bunch of different roads uh, to get you there. Um, but Jesus, back to this, uh, Jesus, differently than all these other religions, says, I am the way. I am the one way, the truth uh, of how to get there. And that's what makes Christianity different. That's what makes Jesus different. Christianity is not about us. It's about Jesus. So, spoiler alert, if any of you thought that this world was all about you, sorry to say, it's not about you. The world does not revolve around us. It's not about us. It's about Jesus. All the other religions are about what we can and should do in order to be saved. Christianity is about Jesus saying, I've already done this. Would you accept this relationship with me and in accepting that relationship then everything is accomplished and you can be saved from the bad things this is what we hold in our faith we cannot earn our salvation every other religion says you can earn your salvation by doing this we cannot earn our salvation now don't get me wrong because we're human we try to do that. We want to do that. We think we can do that. Uh, we think if we do certain things, if we have a certain uh, morality, you know, that um, based on, on how we were raised, you know, that if we do these certain things, that will be good. You know, that uh, if, if we don't smoke or drink or chew or go with girls who do, then, well, God is happy with us. We did all the right things and we're good. And God says it doesn't matter if you do those things. Maybe it'd be better if you don't, but not necessarily what saves us. We are saved by Jesus. We are saved because Jesus has done what God has asked us to do and we are unable to do. Jesus has done that and has suffered, died, and resurrected. And then by faith, we believe and receive the gift of grace that is possible in Jesus to be able to be saved by what he has already done. This is what makes Jesus different. It's also what makes Jesus superior. The author of Hebrews tells us in verse 3 of uh, chapter 1 that we're looking at this month. We see that Jesus is superior because he shows us what God is like. He introduces us to God. He tells us what God is like. He he is in the image of God, a perfected image. Jesus can be trusted. He's not one that we're going to have to fact check. Um, Jesus can be trusted in what he says. Um, Jesus ultimately forgives our sins. It doesn't matter what sins we, we're struggling with. It doesn't matter how many. It doesn't matter how often we've done them. Even the secret stuff, Jesus forgives that. And ultimately, Jesus' work is complete. We don't have to add anything to it. Now, don't get me wrong, we do try, but it's unnecessary. Jesus' work is complete. A little math equation for you. Jesus plus anything else is not equal to the gospel. The gospel is Jesus has done this and we accept by faith through grace that is the gospel adding anything else to it is superfluous and unnecessary and obscures what the truth of the gospel is so we believe and trust that jesus has already accomplished everything and his work is complete and sufficient that's why as he is breathing his last one of the last words he says is it is finished it's complete everything is already 
taken care of and handled because that's been the plan from the foundation of the world of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit well before we're even aware of it, even before we ourselves were even um, on the radar of, of history. Jesus is better and different than every other religious leader, religious teacher, and religious system. If we believe and trust in the gospel that is based on Jesus Christ, we have salvation. Amen.